So uh, Ricky didn't actually tell the truth. Um, I'm not going to tie everything together. Um, you, you know, this whole business of um, event wrap-ups, et cetera, um, they, don't, they don't really work quite the way they used to in, in the past. Um, be, be, partly, well, not partly, uh, largely because people are doing their own wrap-up as the event occurs. You know, so there's this, the tweet stream. So you want to know what happened? Go to the tweet stream. It's, it, it, it's, it's the wisdom of the crowd. They've already selected the high points. Um, and, uh, and actually, it really is, you know, very useful. Um, um, uh, and, and it's changed, you know, I think the way we um, uh, reflect back on events that we've been to. Uh, and it's the reason that we get upset when We've got conflicting hashtags, et cetera. Um, so, uh, so I'd urge you, um, uh, you, you know, to take a look back if you haven't, uh, and, and I'm grateful to all the folks who were, uh, you know, tweeting. Um, I, I'm now convinced that you can do that and actually pay attention at the same time. Um, so I no longer take offense, you know, that 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 you know your 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 Twitter feed was actually more interesting than the speaker. Um, <laughs> In, in, in any case, um, it, it really has, uh, I think, changed the way um, uh, the way we think about events and, and, and their, their record and you know what they leave behind. Uh, so yeah, I have a, I have a couple of observations, but but bef before I do that, uh, it seemed to me that um, you all have actually invested your time and your attention, and I, I'm I, I'm just wondering, my colleagues still have microphones available. Um, I'd be really interested in hearing uh, from you all if you had any particular takeaways that you thought were important. Um, it would be nice to share those. Um, raise your hand. Let, let, them, let them hand you a microphone. Tell us what you're going to take away. Jan. I'll have a go. Um, first of all, it's been it's been a, a great uh, conference, uh, very uh, many interesting talks. Um, an emphasis I've noticed on competition. It, it, we all want to do well in the rankings. Authors want to do, uh, you know get uh, the highest uh, possible uh, citation scores, etc. And competition, um, if as we heard yesterday, uh, the pie isn't growing, competition becomes a zero-sum game. If I win, you lose. Um, I, I was wondering, and, and this is just sort of a philosophical reflection, if you like, um, if we spend all this effort in uh, measuring impact, wouldn't it be uh, preferable to put at least some of that effort in measuring the societal impact of, of research and, and science as a whole, and use that, that effort to convince funders, whether they be uh, government or, or private funders, to just put more money in research, thus growing the pie. That's, uh, that's what I will take away from this uh, conference. No, it's a, well, that's, a, that's an interesting observation. And, um, you know, I, I, I think the business about the, the pie is not growing, um, it, it depends on what pie you're pointing at, you, you know. So for, for, for different things that we discussed, um, particularly when you when you you talk about research funding and the way it, it, it might get to tie, it gets tied to some of these reputation uh, assessments and ranking, yet yeah, there clearly the pie isn't growing and and this is this is these are tools that are being used to carve up you know that pie, um, you know I think I think if you think about it in the way you were just suggesting, which is you know research having a broad societal impact. I mean. You, you know, there, there you, you don't have a limitation on the, the, the flow of benefit. Uh, we have a difficulty in, you know, in measuring or being able to talk about it in ways that, that I think are compelling. Um, but, but I think a lot of what we heard was, was really about um, uh, trying to um, uh, not just have a, a reputation, um, a, a reputation narrative, but, but to tie that narrative to these kinds of broad goals that are set both at the university, but but are you know broad societal challenges. 
I mean, um, you know, I think the, the humanities story we were hearing from, you know, Catherine earlier is, is, is fundamentally a story about, um, you, you know, a broken narrative. Um, you, you know, there's, 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 um, there's a certain degree to which, you know, the, the, the humanities circumstances right now, at least in, in a North American setting, um, you, you know, are, are the consequences of uh, the way we've, we let the academic narrative get out of hand um, and, 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 and have failed to talk about it in terms of um, uh, societal benefit, in terms of, you, you know, you know broad, uh, broad betterment. Other observations? Hi. Um, so this is Martha Ruska. I'm at uh, UC San Diego. And, and one of my takeaways is really um, to think about, you know, if you're in this area of reputation management, I really think it's important to take that message to the actual faculty and researchers. It's their reputations. And, and there's been so much, you know, discussion about you know, how this aggregates and what it reflects on the university as a whole and, um, and, you know, and being sensitive to those concerns that we've heard about. Um, so you're doing what with this about me? Um, I think maybe making sure they really understand um, the whole social impact of what this is about and, and that hopefully that too will uh, help impact and, and affect what I do think is a concern about the humanities and not really being part of that big aggregated picture. Um, I think the faculty themselves really have to be sort of more vocal about um, not just reacting to don't aggregate this about me, but, um, but own, own this. It's their reputations. The universities are the accumulation of the reputations of their faculty. Um, and as a librarian, I don't necessarily want totally to just be forwarding the reputation of my university, but also making sure the faculty know their role in this. And, and so, you know, to that extent, things like what they can do in Google Scholar is, is kind of empowering for them individually. And so, something to think about. You know, well, well said. And, and um, I think uh, you know, I think there were a, a, a couple of our speakers, uh, you know, actually began to get at that point that you were just making. Um, you know, that especially when we had the conversations about you know what are faculty motivations for participation. Um, you know, I thought I thought Peter and and Jiro were were pretty uh, pretty articulate about you know you don't have you don't have sanctions you don't have mandates. Uh, you've got to be able to communicate and persuade, and that happens at an individual level. Yeah. Other things? Okay, that's fair. I should have given you a warning. Yeah. <laughs> I should put like a little card on every table that said there's going to be a quiz. Uh, um, okay, so um, observations. I, I have a few. Uh, they're they're uh, in no particular order, nor uh, you know have any particular exponent associated with them. Um, they're just kind of some stuff that stuck as we were going along. Um, okay, uh, I'll start with the <laughs> with the most recent. Okay, that. We should have tattoos that say that, you know. Conflicting imperatives abound. Uh, that that, that kind of summed up the, the day and a half as far as I was concerned. Um, um, some other things, though. Uh, it was really brought home to me the extent to which these, the, 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 the countries represented here that have research assessment regimes of one kind or another that are tied to funding. There's a completely different approach and a completely different sen sense of urgency, and I think um, uh, I, I mean I think we felt that you know throughout um, it, you, you know people looking at one another like they're from a different species. How could you behave that way? You know, how could you behave that way? It's really staggering. Um, but but a, but a crucial thing to remember, it seems to me, uh, when we have these interactions, you know, that said. 
the, you know, the underlying tools and you, you know, the underlying behaviors and services that, that are getting, um, getting uh, 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 built are, are, are across uh, different circumstances, whether you have mandates and, re and, and assessment regimes or not. They, those are still areas where we can learn from one another and take things away. Um, I, I've been an observer of the various ranking schemes and et cetera, but, but listening to folks over the period was finally, I think, you know, the, the, the complexity uh, associated with them and the, and the proliferation of them really came through and, and the extent to which um, we've, got to, we've got to be aware of these things and that it, it, it's, a, it's a significant task to unpack the complexity and the proliferation. Um, a couple of our speakers who've, who've been leaning against this rock for, you know, for multiple years, particularly in the, in the circumstances where these assessment regimes exist, um, uh, you know, even with overt planning and action to try and influence, you know, ranking and reputation and where it's made, uh, you know, it's been made a university priority, it's really a long-term play. Um, and, and, and that came through. So as we, do these, as we do these things, as we think about tool sets and services, as we think about getting the library involved, we're in it for the long haul. Uh, these things aren't gonna go away and, and, and uh, they shift, um, but they shift slowly. There's a lot of talk about the library role. I think, I think pretty much everybody who spoke and, and alluded to the librarian's role it, you know, it was reasonably positive about um, what we know, what our skill sets are, and, and, and that we actually have a role to play uh, in, in that broad array of ranking, reputation, et cetera. Um, uh, there was concern about the, the, the nature of the skill sets that, that we have, and maybe they're not as broad, maybe they're not as apt, and, and, and we've got to be we've got to be consciously altering that if we intend to take advantage of the opportunity to have a role. Um, you know, multiple speakers, in, including folks who are not part of the library community, said, look, you know, you, you know you're a neutral party. You've, you've actually got the power to convene. You, you, you should be using it. Um, and uh, th those are things, and they're, and they're separate from the other kinds of contributions that we can make, whether it's, you know, help with system design or, 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 or data contribution or identity management, visualization, you know, those kinds of things that are real specific to, um, uh, to, to certain dimensions of the reputation ranking problem. Um, uh, yeah, we can contribute those, but, but we shouldn't forget the kind of meta um, opportunity that we have, and that's really around our uh, our, our relative neutrality, our trustedness, uh, and, and our power to convene. So take advantage of it, was the message I took away. Um, well, we've already had some of this conversation about motivating faculty participation, and, and many speakers you know, alluded to this, I mean, Anurag just did. You know, the best way to get people to participate is, is to deliver something to them that you know, makes them better off. Uh, it's a thing that makes them motivated. Um, and, and we know the, the relative degrees of difficulty which they're willing to invest in order to get that good thing. It isn't very high. Um, uh, so so, so the, the whole complex of motivating faculty particip participation seemed to me to be uh, you know, a thing that ran through a lot of comments. Um, and you know, Martha just, uh, I think, you know, mentioned it. Um, the, the idea that we have to find some place to start uh, you, you know, to, to make that contribution in that a, a, a place we ought to consider as a, as a starting place, building an institutional bibliography, uh, providing a dark archive, building services on top of it. That seemed to me to be a, a, a very useful advice. You know, you may have to start small, you, but, but you got to start someplace. And th that creation, that work to generate an institutional bibliography uh, seems to me to be one where w we have standing, not likely to happen in other parts of the institution, uh, and, and a place where, where you can uh, summon out uh, partners uh, because they will see the benefit that they might get from having that available, uh, uh, in, including the, the possibility of the services built on top of it. Uh, 
there was a lot of conversation in, in, in different uh, speakers, um, but both in the questions and answer period, but, but in their presentations about um, things that we ought to be doing as librarians as we try to be involved in a helpful way and in, in reputation, ranking, uh, et cetera. Um, you know, it requires intra-university collaboration. We got a lot of good suggestions about, you, you know, within a, a university, who are the likely partners? Um, you know, they have different names at different places, but, but y y you know who they are. Uh, you know, it's, it's not just the Office of Sponsored Research. There, there's others. Um, people were pretty articulate about saying, you know, this is a communication job. You, you, you've got to be ready to, uh, to invest both up and down communication, internal and external. Um, managing expectations is, is, is really important. Um, um, you, you know, this is one of those under promise, over deliver moments for, uh, for us. We really ought to take that as the, as, as the starting point. Um, we can skip the, the humanities reference, but, but that came up again and again, right from the beginning when Keith said, you know, we've got a problem with the metrics associated with humanities research to the conversation we were just having now near the end. Um, I thought that the, the ability to tell a story around um, high level university goals that are connected to societal benefit um, uh, was was the, the the really important entry point to reputation, um, you, you know, saying a number we rank X, you know, we, we rank Y in reputation. Um, it, it, it's a it's a shorthand that's kind of toxic. If you if you need to unpack it, you need to say what that means, and. Um, you know, I thought um, I, I thought uh, Giro's uh, look at Ko's way of thinking about that, and to talk about you know the university wants to make this kind of contribution to society. Here's three challenge global challenges that we're uniquely equipped to deliver on, and and here's what that means for the way we're going to behave. And I mean that that's a story that you, you know. Get, can get told from the bottom up and not doesn't have to come from the top down. So thinking about our story as we engage in any kind of support for reputation and ranking activities seems to me to be you know, really critical. And it's the kind of thing that will make it possible for faculty to see themselves reflected in some of these activities. Uh, and yeah, and if you're talking to faculty, you know, two words that should get wiped from your vocabulary or infrastructure and assessment because they don't want to hear it from us uh, either way. Um, and, and we can thank David for reminding us that that's the case. We could talk about it amongst ourselves, but uh, outside this room. Um, and, and finally, my favorite phrase was, you know, don't worry about it. The, the, the people who are good do want to get better, and they're your allies, so harness them. Um, and, and, and that's the way to grow participation in some of these activities within the institution. Um, you know, the folks who are good are going to be motivated because they do want to get better, and uh, engaging them and using them as partners as we go forward is really important. So those, those were some of mine. Uh, uh, now I shift just for a moment because uh, this falls into the category of end of the story. So yesterday we had uh, had these slides about uh, about the founder of Keio University, Fukuzawa, and, and I thought Jiro was, was was really quite good about you know his impact on on on, on uh, Japanese society and and the mo and the modern age. I mean, pretty extraordinary fellow. You know, there, there was this reference to Commodore Perry and and um, the Conrin Maru. Um, so it turns out, and I thought, I sort of remember something about, the, uh, about this. So, so Fukuzawa was, had been dispatched by his, his brother to go um, uh, to where the Dutch colony and the early trade occurred. And, and he, um, he went there, he spent a couple of years. He actually became fluent in Dutch. Um, 
And then Commodore Perry showed up and, and they recalled him from the Dutch um, and they said, oh, you know, you, you should go and interact with these foreigners in the, you know, in the, in the bay that have shown up. And it turned out they all spoke English. And, and he was like, oh my God, now we have to learn English. Um, and um, shortly after that, the, the, the ship that, that, uh, um, that Jiro referred to got dispatched to go uh, to the west. And, and Fukuzawa um, you know, volunteered and said, I, I'd, like, I'd like to go. Um, and so he was, was put onto the ship and, and his task was, to, uh, was actually to, to help people with, um, with English and, and, and learning. Um, and where did they come? They came here. Uh, and, um, and so he, he spent a couple of months here in San Francisco uh, in 1860. Um, and this is one of the, those iconic uh, uh, you, you know, photos. Um, that, that was the daughter of the photographer who asked if she could get her picture taken with, um, with, with this person. Um, so I, 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 I bring this up partly because I couldn't resist the San Francisco connection um, uh, and, and be, be, because it's a really good story and fundamentally what we have to be able to do is tell stories like this about what our universities are up to, what kind of benefit they're delivering, and, and what kind of impact they intend to have on society. And um, uh, the, 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 the Fukuzawa story, I think, fall, you know, is one of those kinds of stories. We need these kinds of narratives in, 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 in order to make the difference we really would like to. Um, so thank you. Uh, I'm really glad you were all here. We're ending this part of the uh, the gathering uh, now. Uh, we'll, there's going to be some lunch, as Ricky said, um, but but we're going to reconvene uh, here uh, at at one to have a a, a further conversation to uh, give us some guidance about next steps we might take in 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 doing productive work around the evolution of the scholarly record and and how that impacts our collecting activities, et cetera. So uh, I, I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Ricky for bringing us together. Uh, it cost her her voice as well as the, the last couple of months of her uh, of her work life. Uh, Jeanette for taking care of us and, and all the logistics and, and all of you for uh, making the journey. Uh, it's really always great to spend time together and have this kind of a, uh, kind of a discussion. So thanks very much. Well done.